our Lord Jesus Christ, the focus that we're going to particularly look at is found in 95 verse 1. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Interesting language, isn't it? That God is compared to a rock. Uh, up front here we have a piece of stone. Uh, some of the rock that's being used on facing and the new construction uh, outside. Did you know you feel that rock? You, you, you touch it, you lift it. And then you think how many times the Bible compares God to a rock and says that he is a rock. It's, it's rather unusual language for a personal God to say that he is our rock. We sing a lot of songs that refer to God in the language of rock. I don't know how many of you noticed this, but every single song that we sung so far this worship service referred to God as a rock. I think we sang six songs already, and all of them are rock songs. And there are a lot more of them. We sing, rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Or on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. And each one of these references to God as a rock comes from a biblical context. Here, of course, the parable about building your house on a firm foundation, on, on the rock rather than on the sand. And at the end of our message, we'll sing one more. Faithful one, you are my rock. You are my rock of peace. You are my rock in times of trouble. So we've got all of these songs that refer to God in references of rock. And we're going to explore that this morning. We're going to explore our relationship with God as our rock. And we're going to see how central it is to the peace, the comfort, the sense of security that we get in being the people of God. But you need to realize that that imagery of the rock goes way, way back. I mean, we, we saw it in Psalm 95. But just real briefly, in Genesis 49, Jacob, at the end of his life, as he blesses his children, refers to God as a rock. Moses, in Deuteronomy 32, an old man, nearing the end of his life, saying farewell to the people of Israel, refers to God, blesses God as his rock. Psalm 95, which we looked at, clearly comes in the context of remembering the exodus from Egypt under the leadership of Moses, later Joshua. It refers to the 40-year period. It refers to the time where God has called his people and is bringing them out of Egypt and into the land of the promise. And that psalm, that remembers that relationship and that journey, calls the people of God to sing and celebrate and rejoice because of the relationship that they have with God as a rock. And hopefully by the time we finish looking at a few of these biblical metaphors and, and illustrations of that rock, it's going to powerfully increase our appreciation for who God is and this language for God. God is our rock. God gives his laws at Mount Sinai. And Mount Sinai is pictured as a big rock in and of itself. It's a, a rock that is daunting and impressive. And God comes to that rock and he shakes the mountain. And then God gives his law on tablets of stone. And God does that to structure the life of his people. God does that out of love. 
God does it out of a relationship with his people so that they know how to live in this world. God says, I want you to be a holy people. I want you to be a, a tribe of priests within this covenant so you can live holy and pure and true lives. And I want you to be a blessing to the world in which you live. And so God gives them some rock-solid guidelines for life. Do this. Do this so that you may live in the land. Do this so that you can enjoy your relationship with me. Do this so that you can live in harmony with each other. Do this so that you can be a light to the world. And so God comes as the rock of Sinai. God gives his law to his people. Do you know the reality is we live in a, in a day and an age. We live in a world in which everything seems to drift and erode. Societal standards change. What used to be right gets questioned as, well, maybe, maybe it's not important anymore. And if you think about it, if you look at, at what was considered the right way to live before, a lot of those things are, are seemingly up for grabs. Definitions of family and marriage. Expectations in terms of how we would live. We live in a world and in a society in which the Ten Commandments of God are often ignored. And if they are upheld by the law of the land, it's usually not because this is what God says, but because there's some recognized humanitarian principle that, that people say this might be still a good thing to do. But God, God is rock solid. And there's something marvelous about that. There, there's something delightfully comforting about the reality that God doesn't speak one way in one generation and then totally different and contradict himself in the next. There, there is a timelessness to the right and wrong of God. And the wisdom of God as revealed in the law of Mount Sinai. And the law of God as revealed in the word of God to love God above all and to love our neighbor as ourselves. That timelessness is liberating. It is genuinely liberating because then we know the right way to live. We know the way that God will be honored. We know the way that we will be blessed. God is our rock. And Psalm 95 reflects the joy of knowing the Word of God. Secondly, Psalm 95 remembers the water in the wilderness. Psalm 95 remembers how God came to Moses when the people were uh, virtually dying of thirst. They had no water. They're crying out to Moses. And God says to Moses, speak to the rock. And Moses went a step further and he struck the rock when he should have spoken to it, but God was gracious anyway. And water flowed out of the rock in the wilderness. And there is that imagery of the bubbling, pure stream of miraculous water. And it's a reminder that in the wilderness of life, God comes with his refreshing, renewing love. God brings life where there's death. God brings hope where there was hopelessness. God brings light where there was darkness. The water from the rock is a powerful imagery of grace. Unexpected, delightful, refreshing grace. And Psalm 95 celebrates that God is that rock from whom we have the source of salvation. That, that God is the rock from whom flows the living water. Here already the hint 
of what Jesus promises when he is the living water and he says to the woman at the well, I will give you living water and you won't thirst again. What a powerful image that is, and we're going to look a little more about the application of that later on, but even now, start, start thinking about that. Apart from God, is life not a wilderness journey? If we're separated from God, if we're not right with God, if we're not worshiping God and, and being blessed by God, is not life an arid, dry, desert experience? The Bible says that it is. Well, we can deny that and we can try to rationalize life apart from God, but the reality is if God is not in our life and if we're not in God's plan of salvation, then life is dry. And in fact, that's the wilderness journey of death. So God is our rock. He is the one who gives water in the desert. And God also gives protection in times of danger. This, this slide may be a little bit difficult for you to exactly picture, but let me explain what's up there. Uh, this is a picture of the fortress that was later built on the rock of Masada. You know, the Bible describes rock um, as a material, as a substance for building fortification. When the Israelites wanted to build the city wall, what did they look for? Rocks. Oh, they might use some wood and they'd use some mud and they'd use those kind of things, but the thing that makes the wall strong is rock. In fact, Isaiah even talks about people taking their own homes apart to get the rock for building material to build the wall. The comfort of the home can go when it's a life and death matter of security to build the wall against the Assyrians or the Babylonians. God is a rock fortress. God is rock solid. And this fortress at Masada was built right on the top because it's a defensible position. People that want to come up there need to try to scale that wall. And in military terms, they're easy picking as they come up to that fortress. The point is, the Bible is full of imagery that says to you and to me, if you want to be safe, if you want your life to be anchored, if you're looking for protection, whole life protection, your heart and soul, this life and the next, this world and heaven to come, if you want to be safe, you need to be in God's fortress. You need to be having your life anchored in the rock. Psalm 95 celebrates that. Do you know, we, we can see how these imagery, images are all fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Jesus says he came not to abolish the law, not to do away with it, not to say that there uh, is no practical relevance in the commandments that God gives us. He came to fulfill it. Jesus came so that we would not be under the judgment of the law, but God would say the law is setting you free because it's fulfilled in Jesus. Jesus came not to do away with guidelines for living, but to empower us with the Holy Spirit so that we could follow those guidelines for holy living. God has a wonderful plan for us and God is our, as our rock says you don't need to doubt that. It has not eroded. It hasn't drifted away. It is not just something of the past. My will for your life is here today and it's here to stay. That's a an image that you can hold on to. 
It's an image that will encourage you. We are not tossed out into the world without a compass, without a GPS, without an indication of where God wants us to go. God has given us his word. And in this journey with God, he has given us in Jesus Christ the water of eternal life. Oh, there will be times when we go through dry spells. There will be times when our soul and spirit may seem parched. But Jesus is the living water. And God in his word gives us the invitation to live in that relationship with Jesus in such a way that we are daily refreshed so that we drink of that water and drink deeply and enjoy the relationship that we have with him. And then we, we will be anchored in God as our fortress. Our families will be anchored in that solid love of God. Our heart and soul, our life, uh, who we are will be protected by God as our rock. So when you think about that and you put those images together this morning, God is the one who shows us his will for our lives. God is the one who is the fountain of salvation, the source of joy. God, who is our security today and eternally. What a powerful image we have in the rock. Think about that when we sing all of these songs with that, that image. Let that image be a comfort, an inspiration. Let it be for you something on which to continue to build your faith. It's a promise for us as a congregation. As you see the rocks going on the wall, rejoice at that image of God as our rock. But it's an image for us as individuals and families as well. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, you take things as every day and down to earth as a rock and you turn it into a powerful imagery of who you are. Lord, as the psalmist in Psalm 95 rejoiced and called others to come and sing and rejoice, our hearts are exuberant to know that you are our God. Thank you, Father, for the richness of the relationship that we have with you. Thank you for fulfilling that imagery in Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And help us, O oh Lord, to build on that foundation. We pray this to you, our God and our rock, in Jesus Christ. Amen.